What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Elder Scrolls podcast. I'm Scott here with Michael and Drew, as always, and today we have a spooky special, a Halloween-themed podcast where we're going to be talking about a bunch of different spooky lore or lore that we deem scary. Mm-hmm. Sort of have and, and some of it's been sent in by the viewers on Twitter. And if you don't follow us on Twitter, I'd highly recommend it. So I know I've got a bunch of tabs open with uh, different suggestions from different people, as well as some of the things that I think are personally spooky, which I'm sure will have a lot of crossover with Scott and Drew. And I guess we also want to say uh, a massive thank you for 1 million subscribers on Fudge Muppet. It happened. It happened recently. We're all super grateful. Finally. It was it was pretty interesting, um, interesting feeling to see it tick over, and um, mm. yeah, it was a bit surreal. Yeah, we love you. Thank you very much. Thank you and very then much. The big meal. shout out to all the meme people who were trying to like unsub and resub and be. <laughs> you should have seen it. I was sitting there watching the thing, and it's going nine 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 a million nine 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 eight, and just like hovering back and forth. The second it got too far over, then it just piled through because everyone gave up. <laughs> so, <laughs> and we will have a like mm-hmm. formal sort of million celebration. We're planning on doing a live stream, which would also kind of be the next podcast as well. But we will do. We'll stick to Twitter. Like follow us on Twitter, and we'll uh, you know outline mm-hmm. some. But we but we didn't want to not say do. it. Um, we got to yeah. announce that. So thank you again, very, very much. So I guess. We, we need to get spookier. Um, nothing spookier I, I, than the undead if you want to be really on brand for Halloween. Well, one, one thing I thought, like, something that might be a little, like, um, chill, and it's actually just a small thing, but um, in Oblivion, the vampire dreams and stuff mm. that, you, that you get, those creepy descriptions, like, it's something I kind of miss a little bit about the more modern vampires well the vampires in Skyrim and stuff you don't have that same like being a vampire there's not that same like creepiness or like idea of anguish in a way that's it feels like you've got a doctor's diagnosis or something in Skyrim when you catch it whereas it's very like fever dream in oblivion uh, yeah and like as you're like getting the disease you'd sleep and you'd wake up so like to quote someone it's like in your dream you see a beautiful young woman holding an infant to her breast it is only that when you draw near that you realize that the woman is a desiccated corpse and the child is purple and bloated dying of plague as mother and child crumble to dust you awaken and it's like stuff like that give us another one yeah, in, in your dream, an old wise woman treats you for burns on your hands. As she applies a salve to your skin, you feel the tingle of magic as the pain begins to subside. But as you watch, the flesh of your hands begin to bubble, crack, and split, falling, falling in chunks to the floor of her hut. As the wise woman smiles, you wake up. There's also... You feast on a particularly choice cut of roasted meat, and its aroma makes your mouth water. It is only as you cut into the last portion that you see larvae squirming inside. You cough blood as the larvae begin eating their way out of your stomach. But, like, these are the kinds of, like, grueling sort you of, had like, a things that you'd dream see. You had as well, remember? Remember that dream you went upstairs, used the bathroom, and then had your throat slit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a shadowy figure, yeah. yeah but it's like... Were you were very pale the next day. Uh-huh. Yeah, <laughs> but I love that kind of idea that even like sleeping or being this sort of undead vampire creature that you do have this sort of like anguish of when you sleep or there's something sort of like, you know, uncomfortable mm. about and, it. And it's, it's actually know. quite interesting that Vaymina seems to be involved um, with that, at least she used to be, because there's that mm. part in Morrowind where you do a cure for vampirism, which is the quest to cure vampirism, believe it or not. And Molag Bao basically um, pries it from Feyamina uh, after some yeah. dot, dot, dot discussion. <laughs> yeah, so it's like, that, that's so, interesting so it makes me too. Think I guess like, that, yeah, like, if you're having the dreams there. and stuff and he talks about getting the cure from, from her, that she may have something to do with it. Or at least it used to be implied. Nowadays, not so much. If you've seen our recent video that I made on Feyamina, um it seems, especially in the Elder Scrolls Online, that there's a lot of vague stuff, and I really want to see her given the love she deserves in Elder Scrolls Six, because there's something about mm-hmm. vampires as well that's it's very up there, mean as Ali, but also up more like Bowles in that it's not always practical. There are there are some things that vampires do 
that just seems completely unnecessary for the end goal in, in as if they're trying to be cruel and terrifying about it like you know there, there are a multitude of bosmeri vampire clans but one example being the telboff vampires who they seem to target a child in the family get them alone replace them in the family but you'd think they just go home and you know well now i get to feast on an entire family when they're unsuspecting but they kind of like they get ingrained in the family they almost develop an emotional connection with them and then murder them all <laughs> well as we sort of discussed i guess in the in the in the merlag bell episode too like to remember like you know the vampires being um merlag bell's creation but also um that part of his sort of sphere is, is torture and sort of anguish seems to be a big part of it so you can imagine some of them are just cruelty to deliver and pain plots to that, that require a lot of patience you know mm, and i mean what? as a vampire if you're living forever you do have a lot of patience i mean there's also the yakef in if we're speaking of bosma clans who swallow men whole which i suppose is mm. quite scary I don't, what would that even look like some uh, kind well, of some snake. people pay for that <laughs> 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 yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I guess in a snake-like sense, right? Mm -hmm. But, I mean, one way to connect it back to Vermina as well is that, you know, it, it's generally considered a negative thing, but you, you can hear about how, like, animals, at least, in the real world can kind of sense fear or, like, there's the idea that fear taints the blood or does something to, to physically change maybe the way it tastes. And you can imagine vampires, like, developing, developing an acquired taste for fearful Adrenaline victims blood. yeah yeah um which does play into and i suppose if it was a child in your own family that would definitely be you know mm. create quite a concoction of a hormonal response in terms of fear and other things mm. we've we've done um a lot of uh vampire talk in other podcasts um, is there anything else that we should dive into with vampires specifically? We know there's all kinds of different clans. They they feed on blood. Um, I mean, in the Molag Bal podcast recently, we did go over Lemay. Yeah, Balthag yeah. story, um, and that you know that is a pretty spooky tale of of how that all happened. But I guess we don't really need to go into too much detail, except you can imagine, you know, all of all of Molag Bal shenanigans aside, which shenanigans is an understatement. Um, imagine being the tribe that found LeMay and tried to heal her and realized that she wasn't going to come back and you were going to light her funeral pyre. You'd never heard of a vampire. You had no protections against it. And then this woman just returns from the dead and starts devouring your tribe. It would be the most horrifying thing imaginable. I, I've got... If we want to take it in an interesting, like a, a probably a more unconventional um, horror sort of direction that I feel like people haven't heard about much... But have, there's a story called Bone by Tavi Dromeo, right? And it's a tale told of the invention of bone mold armor. Um, in the bone mold video a while back, I, I did include this as part of it. But it, it's a decently long story, so I'll, I'll paraphrase um, the majority of it. But it's essentially this sort of tale that long ago in Vardenfell, there was a there's a king that you don't remember his name. It's you know it's just kind of like a fable kind of told tale. But so they you know Dunma and he's got his keep with all these slaves. But then there's these cannibalistic Nords that come and they're they're attacking um, this keep right. And the keep then then they poison the water source and basically they need to get slay the the guy there. His name is Arslik. Uh, <laughs> what? Is that? Sorry. what? <laughs> Ar Arslik. Arslik own. Arslik. He got bullied. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Anyway, Arslik. Right. Arslik. Ars. Anyway, that guy, he's the ruler of the keep and so on. And he, he sort of sends words out for, for messengers for the, for the king to send, for send guys back yeah. um, to, to help him out. But the king doesn't really like him, so it doesn't come. But anyway, he he's, he's, the king's very... The, yeah, <laughs> he didn't lick us enough. So it's very delayed, right? And then basically um, their water source has been poisoned by the cannibalistic Nords. So he starts sending his slaves out to, to go and um, gather water from the river. And then the slaves go out and they, they gather water from the river. But a lot of them die on the way back and won't get eaten by these cannibalistic Nords. And then they're like, oh, well, I've got to get my armorer to make, you know, collect spoons and stuff all together to basically make suits of iron armor and stuff so that they can be protected from the cannibalistic Nords. They go out, they're still too slow and they die. I can't remember. I think there's a, they, he does it with leather armor too. They gather leather and so on, but they're starting to run out of slaves. But then there's all of these cattle 
Um, and then um, the, he gets the armorer to get the cattle in the keep and their bones and turn that into bone mold. But then they go out and they lose a bunch of the suit. They once again they try and send the slaves out and the bone mold out into um, to sort of kind of fight the Nords, but get water from the river and come back. They fail. Um, a bunch of them fail. But basically, they needed more armor or suits of armor. But then they started using the bones of dead slaves and so on and, and so on that were there. And I'll, I'll get to um, the part towards the end where there's this like really creepy um, description. One second. So basically, Arslik... Arslik. <laughs> so hard. It was going down. The, the armor is called Gaw, um, Gawcliffe. Now, Gawcliffe was saying that he could hear these sort of uh, voices or something of people saying, give us back our bones. Right? right? And then, so basically, um, Arslik, I'll just read it verbatim here. It's probably a bit easier. But Arslik Own joyously dashed down the stairs to Gorkleth's cha chamber. The door was still locked. He beat on it, cajoling, demanding, threatening, and finally he found a key, one of the few scraps of metal that had not been smelted days before. Gorkleth appeared to be sleeping, but as Arslik Own approached, he noticed that the armorer's mouth and eyes were wide open and his arms were folded unnaturally behind his back. On closer inspection, the armorer was obviously dead. What more... Uh, his face and whole body were sunken like an empty pig's bladder. Something moved through the walls, like a footfall only, squishy. Arslik Own expertly and gracefully turned to face it, completely in balance. At first, it seems like nothing more than a bubble expanding through one of the cracks in the stone. As more of the flesh-coloured gelatinous matter emerged, it clearly resembled part of a face. A flaccid, almost shapeless face with a low brow and a slack, toothless jaw. The rest of the body oozed out of the crack, a soft bag of muscle and blood. Behind Arslik Own and to the side, there was more movement, more slaves welling up through the cracks in the stone they were all around him reaching out give us moaned ponic which is one of the slaves his tongue rolling about in his hanging jaw give us back our bones <laughs> arslik own began to rip off his bone mold throwing it to the floor a hundred figures more pulled into the small chamber that's not enough the cannibals had cleared away by the time the king's emissaries arrived at Arslik Own's gate. They had not been looking forward to this visit. It was best that they though philosophically uh, they though Anyway, to begin with the worst of the king's noblemen, so to end with their trip well. They sounded the alarm once more, but the gates did not open. There was no sound from Arslik's uh, own stronghold. It took a few hours to gain access. If the emissaries had not brought a professional acrobat with them for entertainment, it might have taken longer. The place seemed to be abandoned. They searched every room until finally they came to the armorers. They found the master of the manor folded neatly, legs behind his head, arms behind the legs, like a fine gown, not a bone in his body. But yeah, there you go. Did Crassus Curio write this? I can't <laughs> the tell Arslik if this own. is just one big metaphor. You're talking about... Am I the only one who hears it? Ar I think Arslik so, yeah. and, I think and oozing cracks and all this stuff. I guess I don't think it's a. I think it's supposed to be. To gain it's supposed to be horrifying. When, when you read the entire thing, it's creepy. But I just like the idea that there's this sort of spooky fable about bone mold and the idea that it's made from the bones of slaves and then they're just like pulling uh, I, out. I can this, like, see it as mass. spooky, they want their but bones I, back. I can't unsee what I've. I think it's. I think it's the name. If I didn't, uh -huh. ours. Ars lick. I think we'd still laugh yeah, at it's it. It's too anyway. easy to go ars lick. You should hear the story about the origins of bone mold daggers. Mm. You don't want to hear that one. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. no. But it's cool. It's a cool... If you if you want to read it in full, Bone by Tavi Dromeo, it's a cool... Um, it's a cool little... I, I like sometimes mm. when there's those sort of like... It's almost mythological kind of fable around the creation of bone mold because I'm sure that's not exactly how it happened. But it's a cool story yeah i mean they're, they're they're a lot more interesting than simply just oh you know iron and steel and just you know melting down these metals from the earth mm. you know when, when there's a bit of a, a story that you could maybe take as um gospel or you could just say oh no way right as you're all standing in your bone it, mold it's like there's no way this is how it started it's interesting because even in the book it's a, like kind of a group telling a story to another group while they're like drinking about the characters like mm. in the book so mm. yeah it's probably taken all with a grain of salt and even like sort of that so like cannibalistic nords of course they're evil and cannibalistic mm. kind of vibe you know what i mean and it's the unreliable narrator 
which yeah. I mean, you know, that's pretty spooky. People freak out a lot over what's canon, what's what's reliable, what's <laughs> unreliable. That might be the spookiest thing of all is when you bring up an out of law text. People mm. lose their minds. <laughs> Actually, I didn't. I just uh, to throw it out there, I didn't even. Um consider looking through Michael Kirkbride's stuff for horror. <laughs> yeah, me neither. <laughs> I did it. I mean, if anyone, I feel like uh, you should look up, I won't show it because I can't show it, but Michael Kirkbride's, um, I think it's a sketch he did a while ago of Mafala or something. And it's like, it's got it like, it's for own Halloween. genitals going into itself and, and spider arms and, and weird stuff. But it, it's kind of cool. I think it has like nipple swords, Ooh, I'm pretty okay. sure. Yeah, I just had it's, a look. Yeah, That's hold on. Spicy. I gotta, <laughs> you can't yeah i can't show that one <laughs> just google it if you yeah my, really curious. oh my uh, ah yeah. hey wow perhaps don't google it if you can't handle it based <laughs> all right anyway <laughs> but moving yeah on. Um, not safe for work moving on but yeah so where else do we want to go with some spooky stories well, I, I mean you go i was gonna say um, Mr. Bellamont from Oblivion has a pretty disturbing tale uh, from the Dark Brotherhood. The traitor mm. who keeps uh, Mother's head in the basement of the lighthouse that he's living in and writes his creepy, creepy diary, which probably doesn't uh, deserve a reading um, because it's it's <laughs> just it, very cringe. I'd, I'd like that. to hear it word for word. To it's be too it's too long, but there's a lot of like kill him, kill him, kill him, and then mummy, mummy, as you lie, the dark <laughs> man comes and makes you die. My daddy's hands are red with guilt because he killed the life we built, and a whole book um, of this kind he, of stuff. And then hmm. he writes backwards at the end. Uh, Lucian Lachance will die. If you've played the Oblivion, it is quest dark. Line, so, you know you go you go into that lighthouse and you see that like decomposing head of his mother that he's kept around and sort of preserved. It's on a plate, so on isn't it? He, it's sitting on like a yeah, plate until he gets his revenge. Um, that that's pretty gnarly. One thing, just a comment, I guess, about Oblivion, and I I do actually think it's a result of the contrast, but rather than it necessarily being... Because there's pretty spooky things in Skyrim even. But I think because Oblivion on the surface looks far more like colourful and whimsical and so on, when you do get the horror and the grittiness underneath, that contrast sort of makes it stand out so much more. Whereas I feel like when you kind of like come across, say, like, you know, the Namira cannibals in Markarth or so on, it's like, you know, it's pretty grim or so on, but like everything's already rather gritty in Skyrim. But it's it more, like pop it's yeah. more like unsettling palette. too. Like, the idea of cannibals mm. is not... Like, everyone knows what a cannibal is. And, okay, a cannibal cult is gross. But, you know, murdering someone violently is also gross. Eating them is, you know, a further step, which is much worse. Mm. But there's something so messed up about keeping your mother's head. Like, oh, it's, yeah. it is worse, I I'd say. Um, you know... Yeah, I think it's more like the thing that makes it feel more horror like is that this, it it's um it's psycho. It's kind of like the psychological. Yeah, yeah it's like that part of it that makes him seem a little more unhinged. But then again, <laughs> eating people is pretty funny, <laughs> uh, unhinged arguably. But I guess the way it's sort of and the diary handled. too with the childish words mm. and uh, I don't know. Anyway, I suppose mm. like you 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 go. Mm. It's your time to well, shine. since you were talking about the Dark Brotherhood, mm. we might as well. Uh, address the void elephant in the room of Sifis, you know, like yeah. Sifis being, I mean, there's a million ways we can go with this, but simply the story of the night mother, you know? So if you, if you follow the night mother's truth, which talks about the Dunma woman who was, cause night mother being a former title of the Morag Tong. So when the Morag Tong assassinated Versa Duche, the last of the Akaviri potentates and wrote Morag Tong in blood on the walls, they kind of like, you know, they lost a bit of favour across Tamriel. And as they started to dwindle, their influence dwindled. Sifis and the Void hungered for souls. So he chose a Dunmary woman. And I'll, I'll read a tiny bit of here, a tiny bit of it here. Following the Potentate's assassination in Second Era 324, strife descended upon the Morag Tong, and the guild was all but eradicated in Cyrodiil and much of the Empire. It was shortly after these events that the Dunma woman claimed to hear the voice of Sifis himself. The Dreadlord, she claimed, was displeased. He was unhappy with the Morag Tong's lack of success. The Void, he told her, was hungry for souls, and it was her destiny to set things right. 
So according to Dark Brotherhood legend, Sifis visited the Night Mother in her bedchamber and begat her five children. Two years passed before the unthinkable happened. The Dark Elf woman followed through with the Dreadlord's ultimate plan. One night she murdered her children and sent their souls straight to the void, straight to their father. It's like, that's a little messed up and she probably didn't come to that conclusion on her own without quite a lot of Sifis's influence. Yeah. Yeah, I, I really... that. As much as the Dark Brotherhood can be a little bit, um, camp's the wrong word, but like just a very like typical <laughs> kind of like, I'm evil. I'm going to stab you that everything evil and dark. Like it is a cool story in terms of how gritty it is. And I think, and obviously we've talked about like Night Mother being connected to Mafala and so on, but I do really like a kind of recent connection um, that brought to my attention with the... Uh, in in the thirty six lessons of Vivek, you know the Vivek meeting with Merlag Bal and then has all the kids and then kills his children is sort of like a, a pro, you know mantling somewhat um, the anticipation of Mafala, which kind of also more leans itself towards like Mafala being the Night Mother because mm-hmm. it's a very similar kind of um, thing there. But it's a it's a Th- this it's cool. is a, a Twitter thing. But the forces unknown observing you kill uh, in oblivion when you murder someone for the first time. Yeah. Um, hmm. Do you think that comes back to the Night Mother and and? Uh, oh, I imagine yeah. so. I guess it's some kind of thing. One th- one thing about Oblivion actually is like I feel like, and maybe it's because I was just a kid and it seems more scary. But there were some like cool things like that, for instance. But also, um, even the well, it's rather typical now. But the, when you get um, Benarus Manor in Anvil for cheap, mm-hmm. and then ghosts come and attack you and so on, mm-hmm. and then you like realize that there's actually a curse there, or that there's a necromancer underneath, or his ancestors. That, that's and so a, that, that on, is a, actually, a uh, I guess, a story worthy of a Halloween episode. Um, sure. So I'll just try and find the actual story, but. I, one extra anecdote just yeah, in between yeah. there too, just thinking about ghosts is another thing that was cool in the Dark Brotherhood related to them is that if you broke any of the tenants, that a wraith would come, like a wraith of Sithis would come and like, you know, um, try and screw you up. But if you survived, you could get back Wraiths in. are a uh, interesting, I guess, undead creature that we should probably talk about a little, but I'll get the um, journal note from Lorgren. So Lorgren is the necromancer who you find has been living under the house you purchased in Benarus Manor. And uh, here's what he has to say. The people of Anvil are worms. How dare they criticize what they don't understand. I shall have my vengeance in a form they cannot possibly imagine. I shall use the souls of the departed to prolong my own life. The tome is very specific. I must have more bodies. Yes, more bodies. Now, just for clarity, that do you remember that tome? Like, that tome's really cool. You go through the... um. You need a Benarus to open this portal type thing. It's a very nice aesthetic design on the brick wall in the basement. And it all opens up with like a mechanical device. I used to think that was so yeah, sick. Yeah. Like I dragged all of my stuff into there after you complete yeah. the quest. And so I dragged it all in there and you like open my secret passage, the big mm-hmm. magic seal and like all my like rare stuff's in there. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, his last entry says, The fools think I don't hear them speaking. I can hear their rumor and innuendo. They intend to meddle in powers they can barely comprehend. They call me an old fool and shun me. The dare, the young dare each other to step one foot in my yard. I have become the stuff of old wives' tales and campfire stories. They dismiss me as an oddity, but soon they will see. When all of Anvil lies in waste around me, when their corpses litter the streets and their blood dampens the earth, only then will my true power be known and feared. So this is a guy who basically, he ended up getting done for... um digging up all these corpses, I think, in the cathedral and trying to be this crazy powerful necromancer. And then when the leader, or the current leader, when you play Oblivion, um, of the Mages Guild there, Carahill, she came and basically struck him down with a group of mages, but he just vanished. Um, And they never knew really what happened to him. And he's there in the basement Mm. being a spooky, spooky Halloween skeleton. (laughs) <laughs> yeah it, i don't remember it like being i remember actually funnily enough it's like that shock actually when you just wake up and there's you know ghosts. i actually got full-on yeah, jump scan yeah. there's ghosts because i was like oh what the hell and then all of a sudden i'm being attacked mm-hmm. like what mm-hmm. but it was and you know. I, I suppose just on the topic of sithis from before to deep scorn hollow someone on twitter was talking about just the shrine is worthy of bringing up just for mention um yeah, uh, just for aesthetic cool. it, it does look extremely yeah. cool with all these like 
people and their hands reaching um, you know, out from the walls and going down with spikes to this huge Sitha shrine with a big opening um, where the heart kind of would be showing the spine. It's really, really, That's really cool, cool stuff. Mm. I mean, it's kind of, yeah, it is another example of how, for some reason in Oblivion, some of these spookier moments stand out more. They're more vivid in your mind when you remember them because Skyrim had its fair share of creepy quests. Like there's Frostflow Lighthouse in the north where a red guard family bought this lighthouse and they thought they could hear skeevers in the basement but then it turns out as you explore it that there's a hole in the wall and there are falma living living in a cavern beneath it and they steal away the family hold them captive and there's there's kind of the idea that they're feeding them to their chorus pets and as you yeah. explore it you see you know it's it's pretty heavily implied that the mother kills herself with a dagger to avoid being eaten alive and you know, so when you hear Intense. the Nords talking about how the Falmer are behind all their problems, like crop failure and stuff, <laughs> I mean, it seems like they are behind some shenanigans. You you do find, I'm pretty sure as well, like a destroyed, um, like a cart with like dead people and Falmer arrows, like sticking out of things. Mm, right. I mean, if you were a bandit though, wouldn't that be the perfect crime? Just loot some Falmer arrows mm. from, you know, from a ruin and use them to commit commit mm. crimes and they'll just get <laughs> blamed on the film there's also the uh the pale lady mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as well which is cool like that um goat there's a few there's a few spectral kind of things like the, the other one to, to bring up i feel like people will want us to bring up but uh, i think it's anderil or something the necromancer who's basically a necrophiliac with ghosts he loves to uh do that i think he was, get it on he with was a little bit of ghosts. an incel because he was very <laughs> interested in the local ladies but obviously wasn't getting a ton of attention so he's like you know what i'll go to this crypt where they can't Okay, I'm not going to say that. Where they, you know, where they're not really quite as picky as living women are. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and that's his story. Yeah, there yeah. are some, there are some very creepy people. I know there's a Dramora in Morrowind we can't even mention really because uh, this video will get taken down. Oh, you can say that. Right. Like basically, he, yeah, he the says one... he'll do something with your corpse. So that's clear enough. Yeah, but that's not exactly, I guess, it's horror. That's well, almost. Mate, I don't know. In, I mean, <laughs> it's kind of a demon. I mean, it, <laughs> it is kind of yeah. It, not in the same way. It's not like that, like super. It's not spooky Halloween vibe. It's just over well, the top. Yeah. I mean, we don't really think about Dramora as being particularly creepy, but I guess like if you were really living in the old in Tamriel, they, the there would be some creepiness about them. Like there's a a book called A Tragedy in Black where this this young apprentice conjurer summons a Dramora. And finds out because he's just kind of naive that if you accept a gift from a Dramora, then you kind of free them of the binding of the conjuration. So the Dramora offers him a black soul gem, an empty black soul gem. And because the young wizard took it, that Dramora was now free to soul trap the boy in that black soul gem. And then mm. goes on to do it to all, like implies that he's going to go on and do it to his whole family. So it's like, don't get into conjuration unless you're pretty well versed. See, yeah, I mean, that's a that's a cool story too. But I think one thing anyway with most of like horror anyway, like well, a lot of it's like rooted in sort of fear of the unknown. And in Elder Scrolls, people understand a lot more like things like Dramora and stuff a lot more. Not your common people necessarily, but you know, you can see how it comes across as less scary because there's not that like scary, like unknown, I don't, don't understand things. Mm. Well, that's one on. thing they do really well, bringing it back to the Pale Lady. And there's there are multiple quests like this, but say you were just playing it and you don't care to read in-game texts. It would be a fun quest, delving into this ruin and then finding the Pale Lady at the bottom in a, in a like secluded glade. But if you actually read the journals, it kind of builds up the tension as you kind of discover that they're, they stumble across this weird creature in the in the bowels mm. of this ruin and it's yeah so it's like if you choose to take your time then it can really build up the creepiness mm. i still i still do like the idea of um the wisp mothers and like the pale lady actually being like specters of like falma from long long ago like mm. before their like transformation into it like the idea that they're like vengeful spirits from the time of when the nords slaughtered the you know their way it, it would be cool and i suppose let's talk about ghosts and wraiths and and this type of thing mm. for a bit because uh, there's some vague areas but i guess that's what make makes it interesting but basically there's this idea that wraiths 
can be created um, or formed naturally from people who die, who like still have something left to do, like some important work that they didn't fulfill, some errands, some errands to run, <laughs> as well as um, some who have suffered some great injustice. You know, the classic like cursed. I, I mean, like Witcher does this a lot with a lot of monsters where you have some mm. kind of like demonic being who, I don't know, was... Um, I, I don't know. But you know what I'm talking about. Like, yeah, like literally the wraiths in, in The Witcher where it's like, you know, they're often depicted as young, for, like once beautiful yeah, women yeah. with like flower crowns. And, and stuff I know and there's like, the baby as well. The, um, the botchlings. The botchlings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like there's that, that, that has a similar energy in terms of mythology. Interesting too. I wonder if that like wraiths broadly, if, you know, they've got a kiss, if they're staying around and they've got some you know, curse or unfinished kind of business too, if they are in that sort of like state of anguish. Cause I'm pretty sure it's mentioned in, um, with the Dunma ghost and the worshiping, uh, bringing back the ancestors as like sort of spectral beings is uncomfortable for the ancestors, but they do it because they, you know, they want to, and they care about their bonds and so on. But the, the idea of being pulled from like whatever sort of spirit world or other world or whatever is a painful experience like being bound mm. still mm. yeah and i mean you know all the cheese aside in the shivering isles the hill of suicides if if you boil mm. it down is really kind of depressing you know you got um these people who committed to, like committed suicide in real life and or in tamriel real life and are now trapped here for eternity unable to yeah. speak unable to leave and it's like and that's all they wanted wow, was, was to mm. leave yeah exactly mm. it's like Shea Gorov is not, you know, he's not against punching low no. and really being horrible. So. Speaking of wraiths, there's actually some really cool art. Um, if you go looking for it, there's some like really like Wrath of Scythus. Um, like is just there's this really cool piece of art where he just looks absolutely terrifying. And when you fight the Wrath of Scythus in Oblivion, I remember he's like much faster than a normal wraith. Like the way he moves backwards and, and forwards and and things like that. They're what? quite creepy. And I also like that they have, um, I think it's wraiths. It could be based on the arena description, but I like these little details um, that they can, it could be the same for ghosts in general too, but they can see invisible foes. Like they mm. have this kind of vision it's to see. I feel like at the moment with ghosts and wraiths and so on, there's so much like variability and like a gray area that's not, it's not like as well understood as like other things in the Elder Scrolls lore. One thing actually to bring up uh, too, because we're sort of talking about like a Daedric Prince there, but we can talk about, um, you know, we all know like if we're in a, if you're in a Halloween horror mood, many people are like, oh, HP Lovecraft. And it's like, you can take um, Hermaeus Mora, you know, the big tentacle god and this whole idea that um, a lot of the scariness with Hermaeus Mora and the black books and so on is just being faced with like, impossible to comprehend truths you can't reconcile it with your like meager mortality and so you go insane like that kind of it's the psychological horror rather than the visceral yeah Netflix. what's the word for, there's it's not is it cosmic horror or there's another word for um i guess existential horror but there's another i feel like there's another word Sorry, we know what you mean what i'm trying to specifically mm get at but like i mean there's cool things that like when you read some of the black books and it mentions the godhead and stuff like that and, and i'm gonna bring it up because i love it but uh <laughs> the vivet quote about um you know when you approach god cut both your hands off because um he has no need of theory and he's armored head to toe in terror like i love that idea that that whatever like sort of transcendent like higher being is impossibly it is scary because of just how inconceivable it is mm. being and if you know any horror like a, a root of any horror is kind of like you know fear of the unknown if you literally cannot know something it becomes very you know uncomfortable yeah and, and that is like rule number one if, if you really boil it down to to basic things it's rule number one of horror films is that really the second you know the identity of the killer it, uh, whatever it's it's yeah. like it does take does take the fear out of it somewhat mm. yeah well, speaking of lovecraft um which bethesda seems you know quite fond of a uh, hack dirt is another very unsettling kind of uh place in oblivion and obviously the quest there has you go and rescue dharma who has gone missing while delivering a shipment for her mother and she's been taken captive in this basically um big uh, network of caverns underneath the ground and down there are the afflicted brethren who 
they sniff it's it's really it's really mm. gross but you go down there as they start to detect you you just hear all this like like stuff and they have these huge mm. eyes and they're kind of like a some kind of vampiric race almost like what they've become down there like they they can't take the sun and all of the residents this is the because that in itself isn't the creepiest part all of the residents there are kind of in on this conspiracy where they're all unfriendly for you uh to you they don't like you asking questions if you ask about the brethren they basically threaten you if you go to sleep in the really creepy rundown in there a brethren appears at your bed and attacks you um they're just a really unfriendly unsettling bunch and if you go into the church there you find the bible to this deity that they worship known as the deep one or deep ones and there's all this daedric text in it in the chapel and honestly my interpretation is that uh, was that rather than them being some kind of potentially vampiric race or something different it, it's actually likely a case that they have a very small gene pool so to speak um because mm. it almost seems like maybe you know yeah. like the developers obviously just went into character creation like let's make these people look really messed up um so yeah maybe they've just had a bit too much family love maybe but um mm. yeah they're, they're, they're all like, they're uh, all the males hills have, though the hills have eyes kind of scenario. yeah maybe well you maybe you just don't know where maybe there is only one female and she's tucked away or well, maybe it's one of the maybe it's one of the residents <laughs> who doesn't look like you know, like that. And they, they do some, mm. they're scripted to do some creepy things. And I don't know, like there's been creepy moments where I don't know if it's a glitch or not or real. Like um, some of them kind of like keep an eye on you. Like they walk around no, that's real. looking at you. You know, I know they're scripted to kind of like follow you, keep an eye on you. But I had this really weird, I think his name's Natch. I had this really weird glitch where I'd walk into any room and he would just be in it looking at me. Like full on in my face, just staring at the camera. Um, I didn't even have to talk to him to get the classic oblivion zoom in. He was just there and he was just incredibly, incredibly creepy. And the deep ones obviously are creepy because they're a mystery, but you know, they demand mm. blood. Um, and there's also this creepy spiteful element because hack dirt was burned down. And so they want to return to the good old days, but there's these kind of demonic entities there who their kind of ancestors found who are going to help them mm. and they demand sacrifice. On another note, I, I, it's funny, just in the Elder Scrolls specifically, a lot of the... Um, I think a lot of things could be a lot scarier if it was given the proper positioning. Because, like, Hack Dirt's very set up to be, like, this creepy, like, scary town. And obviously, and it's scary for those reasons. But, like, even even just simple things like the Namira quest, the idea that there's, like, these, like creepy like hide away from the dark people it's a very similar kind of vibe where they come out and attack the priest when the light goes out they will like, they will stuff like that as well i think yeah and i feel like i feel like a lot of it's like the positioning like if you had that same experience it's mm. like oh priest went missing can you investigate and follow it up and then mm. you find you know do you know what i mean it's just the way it's presented. a lot of people have theories as well about who the deep ones are um, but but nobody mm. like really knows for sure like you can go down there and use the tfc console command and fly down to where the sound's coming from and obviously there's nothing down there the daedric text um i think in the bible of the deep ones is a translation of um or part of that text the slow text nagasta kavada kavakas but that i think is just gibberish or it was it was pulled what well, was pulled from some like weird thing like a newsletter about a frog society or some heaps random thing when it was mm. originally made like it's, it doesn't mean anything and then other people sometimes... say it's molag bow um and there mm. is uh one of the uh it could be a tira moslin i forget but if you're a vampire her disposition is like 100 whereas normally everyone there hates you so mm. anyway hack dirt creepy place it, it's interesting sometimes and i like to indulge the idea that everyone's got their models of like there's the typical sort of models in the mythologies and stuff that you see of like you know you can go like the eight spokes the 16 daedric princes stuff like that but they talk a lot about um in 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 the law there's, there's plenty of examples of sort of like this wiggle room or perhaps there's more daedric princes or demi princes or stuff like that and all these unknown capacities ones that perhaps the mortals of tamriel don't know mm -hmm. about and so on and perhaps like um infinite and like it's cool to think that perhaps maybe that's related to the deep ones i if like you, if that you assume I, I, that yeah. the daedric 
if you assume the Daedric language is like a common sort of oblivion thing, then perhaps it is just some other Daedra. In the same way that you hear things in the in the about the Aelid Sorcerer Kings and like, you know, worshipping this insect god. Like, what's that? Like, it doesn't necessarily have to be a Daedra of, of that time. It could have been these ancient People, maybe deities that people knew in ancient times in Rethic era. I like that idea. Previous Calpers or stuff. Because I think people are too quick to like pin things on the obvious culprit as well. Like, "Mm, there's Mm. some cheese here, must have been the work of Shea Gorath, you know? Like like in the Blood (laughs) on the Ice quest, for example, in in Windhelm. Mm. Well, like that's that's a very creepy thing. Um, but let's let's actually talk about um, there's this nice text. I mean, I like it in the Elder Scrolls Online called Civility and Etiquette, Etiquette, Etiquette. and it's um, for dealing with the undead for an Ultima and talks about how like you should deal with them and things like that. Um, it talks about like liches and wraiths. And what I find interesting is that um, it's kind of known by people that wraiths specifically, they don't really like talk. Um, but then here it says... Uh, assuming an Ultima can enter into peaceful communication with a Lich, Wraith, Vampire, or otherwise, she will undoubtedly have many questions, um, but she should be wary of the number of questions she asks. An undead will impart its knowledge willing- willingly or not at all, um, and talks about basically how you should treat these undead like a, like an easily angered elder, um, and that, that they can actually help mm. you if you treat them respect, like you know, with respect and correctly, and know though that undead want things they're they're not the kind of Mm. people who just help you for no reason like if they're helping you they want something and so you need to be on guard um at all time and disguise is another creepy interesting thing it says an undead might not be as she appears many powerful mages possess illusory spells to alter their appearance and so too do the undead the wandering spirit of a lost child could be a starving lich in disguise um and it and I think that, you know, that's cool. The fact that things mm. may not be as they appear. I mean, look at Jagar Tharn. Um, that was actually a Twitter comment talking about how he disguised himself as, you know, the emperor. Um, that yeah. magic in general is scary because of its capacity. Um, you know, it can go as far mm. as your imagination can take it. The things you could do with that. Speak, speaking on liches there, we should probably, like, I mean, we, liches is scary for whatever reasons, like, you know, their flak trees and, like, getting souls and trying to, like, sustain their life forever and so on. And it's a little bit more direct, but but one thing, I guess, that we can kind of, like, rope into a few different topics from there is that, obviously, there's plenty of Aelid liches, you see, but, like, obviously, it's pretty horrifying. It's, like, you know, the, the gut gardens and the, the wailing wheels of Indazel and stuff like that, all of their, like, horrific tortures that they did for Daedric, um means and so on and then you you know you can connect that to um you know michael you did a video on on flesh magic yeah and connecting like the aelids like perhaps you know there's more flesh magic directly involved with the aelids doing it and then that's connecting it back like you're talking there's also isn't the butcher in, yeah he makes he makes Helm. reference to kind of like aelid mm. magics and stuff and when you, when you find and, the altar in his house it's very creepy scene with blood and bones all over the floor the cheese as i said and flesh atronarchs in general are a pretty creepy. They're Halloween. Kind of They're Halloween like, worthy for sure. I mean, Elder yeah, Scrolls Online yeah. even added in mummies if you want to get really traditional <laughs> Halloween, like bandaged. You know. Ooh, yeah. I mean, get you. one thing that's not quite so traditional, which you know, you you wouldn't really think of it with horror vibes at all is the sixth house house dagoth mm. and you know you've oh, oh for sure you could yeah like i, I mean like, e- yeah. even if you gloss over the kind of the the stuff we we already know about how you know you've got this spreading of the corpus and you've got the members of the house kind of ascending into these creatures with like flute like trunks and music like they're very musical as a culture but there's a very long-winded story called the poison song which is it's about someone who has ancestry from the sixth house but is was born years and years and years later but he hears a he hears a song in in the back of his head like you can imagine it's like chimes the the bells that you see house dagoff have and there's a little bit that says uh the song took over all of tay's senses he heard its music smelled its horror tasted its sadness felt its power and the only thing he could see before him was the flames of its destruction when he took the ring and placed it on his finger, his mind was not aware of what he was doing, nor was Tay aware of anything but the song when he removed his dagger from its sheath and thrust it into the old nursemaid's heart. 
So the idea that you're kind of being, you know, the Dunma have this kind of ancestor, this ancestors are very important to you, but the idea that it's kind of always lingering in the back of your mind and can kind of take over is a little to bit be, scary. To be honest, actually, like, Dagoth Ur in general, he is a little bit scary just being... Um, uh, he's a bit more hard, he's harder to understand and so on and then even when you have the idea when the, you know the ash Girls and they're like sort of faces kind of like implode from their like reverse mm. enlightenment or whatever and then out come from out of it comes all of those like you know tentacly flute looking things it's a pretty gruesome M- morrowind had a bunch of like uh creepy stuff in their main enemy because i would say the main enemies of of Oblivion and Skyrim are pretty like dragons obviously very not really that and scary Daedra. at all yeah. you, Daedra, you but can like, be scared, but it's very classic yeah. demonic. Like, oh, it's it's burning hell, and they're like, you know, doing torture and stuff. But it's not as uncomfortable. Yeah, like know? Spider Daedra don't scare you. They, mm. you know, they <laughs> evoke other feelings. <laughs> um, yeah, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, Morrowind was good for that, and Daegothoa is based. What do we think? Well, I guess. It's funny. I, I made a po- uh, like just a tweet recently about like favorite Daedric princes and stuff. And of course, I've always got the good Daedra up there, and Mayor and Dagon's really cool too, and the Mysterious Arcs and so on. But I had number five, Numira, and someone was asking why. And um, besides, like the stories of like the Void stuff, like um, with uh, Lorcaj and and her relation to Lorcan and stuff, and then also in Reachman mythology and so on, I really like the idea of 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 that creepy sort of primordial, like if, she, if you consider her an Erdra as like this ancient, like one of the earliest spirits of Daedra or something. I just find that sort of like really ancient darkness uncomfortable. And I also like the idea that perhaps, you know, that she speaks, there's part of it that speaks to a bit of everyone that there's a, like these dark, gruesome, disgusting desires or something. And the idea that she can turn people into cannibals essentially by embracing these dark, Primal hidden mm. things, or, or or same with I don't know other sort of devious crimes, or, or whatever you want to want to call it. But it's just it's I I like that kind of it's kind of like the similar vibe to the Hacked Dirt Deep Ones kind of stuff, just ancient stuff you don't understand. That like you know rather than just go oh she's Daedric Prince of Ooh, it's not just that that's that's scary. It's the yeah. it's the unknowableness of her like desires and stuff, and this idea that. There's sometimes like really, really, really old things are just scary. Like if you went to a cave, like it's kind of like, you know, when they go like the ideas of like skinwalkers and wendigos and stuff, you go into some cave and there's like some ancient, ancient being and you don't really understand and it's just collecting people. Like, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, it's cool. Things that leave you with questions. Mm. You, you don't need, if you don't yeah. even know why they're doing it, it's even scarier. Even if mm. it's the same result. Yeah. Absolutely. And I mean, there are there are plenty of conspiracy theories in the Elder Scrolls games. Like, I, I don't know a ton about this one, but I, I did like five minutes of research into it because I'd never heard about it. But do you know the kind of theory about Rorikstead? Yeah, yeah. See, I, I had I had never heard about that. And really? It's like, Wait, yeah. which well, which like, one? Because there's a few. Well the, <laughs> well, the idea that it used to be kind of like a, a barren area where you just couldn't grow anything, and then some weird. Uh, potentially daedra worshipping inhabitants have somehow made it the most prosperous um mm. region in the whole of skyrim you know um but i mean you can elaborate if you want but there's there's plenty of others like you could even get into fargo it- but <laughs> 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 don't don't go yeah. down the iceberg again. In regards to Rorikstead, I think that that is pretty much it. It's the idea that there's like you know sacrifices and mm-hmm. daedric worship stuff to go on to make the land fertile and so mm-hmm. on. Also, there's another. I mean, this isn't really that creepy, but there is that headless horseman in the White Run. Yeah, area. it's on. You it's know, on. The idea of thought. Yeah, it's on thing. But do you know how that's almost like Scooby Doo kind of horror? It's not. But like if you think about Halloween, horror, horror. Halloween's not horror horror all the time too. Like most people go around dressed. Well, most people go around. Dressed as all kinds of things, but yeah, so you know like what I mean. Cat ears yeah. and stuff like I that. Know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the thing is, ho- horror um, ha- Halloween. Anyway, it's interesting. Like you know, if we got all its um, origins and so on, its Celtic origins. But like what it was initially, it's just like the time when the, the the veil between the real world of the living and the sort of like spirit world is the thinnest. Mm. And um, I wonder if there's any. Off the top of my head, I can't imagine if the Elder Scrolls, if there is like such a time or something like that. Like obviously there's things like in the Witch, like this conjunction kind of things or other sort of, 
I don't think there is any such thing in the Elder Scrolls from what I'm aware. Mm. I can't it's think. Dragon breaks. But you know what's cool? What's cool too? You know, like other cool concepts that I wish maybe they could play on for Elder Scrolls Six. But the idea is that perhaps there are certain areas, um, like physical areas in Mundus, that are actually like where a veil or some kind of like maybe to oblivion or something is thinner or something. So you go to the town and then there's weird stuff happening in the town and it's a result of, you know, maybe some hidden oblivion influence or something going on or some... I, I, I like those kinds of things. I mean, people want to... Maybe it's a similar-ish vibe to the House of Horrors and Markarth when they're like... Mm. Where the Molag Bell's quest where it's like, oh, it's haunted. There's all this crazy stuff happening and it turns out because there's a Molag Bell shrine down the bottom. But it's not that scary i wasn't that i don't know mm. i mean elder scrolls isn't a horror yeah that, that's <laughs> what I mean. yeah but there's cool little bits in there mm. we also have zombies and skeletons and draga and spooky and other, skeletons yeah all kinds of all kinds of things um but the the draga aren't you know really scary they're kind of just imprisoned eternally to power the dragon priests with their the, the, and dragon priests, if you think about it, they're kind of like a lich, right? Like Skyrim's lich, yeah. floating thing with a staff. I think the Blood Moon version of the Draga is creepier. The idea that they were like cannibals that are cursed to constantly hunger for the flesh that they ate. Like, it's you know, more, they it is more sacred typical of... zombie, but I kind of agree with you. Yeah. But there's a reason it's because there's a... well. Because of a curse, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like the idea that they they feasted on flesh. They did the you know this big crime of that, and then so they've cursed to forever hunger for mm-hmm. it. It's kind of not just necessarily like Walking Dead zombie. Yeah, I mean even the the Draga. Just... There's a text about Bernadette from the College of Winterhold who went and kind of like like lived amongst them, and was saying like um Some once like David Attenborough. Kind of yeah, stuff. like kind of realized <laughs> like, like once. They realized I was peaceful and didn't mean them harm, that I could kind of like observe them, but it was really like spooky still for me to be there. This kind of story. One thing I I just wanted to ask quickly. Cringe counter is a Just (laughs) wanted to ask. (laughs) uh, She says, it seems the high... uh, So I've always wondered why the ancient priests of the dragon cult insisted that their followers be buried with them. It seems the height of pagan vanity to drag your conscripts to their death along with you. Um, what does she mean, pagan? Uh, it's probably just the people like trying to text. Like, basically, even technically, what pagan even means to other yeah. people. Yeah. Ultimately, it's ultimately just means not Abrahamic religions, really. Like, but in Elder Scrolls, what does that reference mean? Reference to older. I guess probably like more fringe. And I wouldn't be surprised if they referred to, in some groups, referred to Daedric cults as pagan at times or something like that. It basically, I guess, just means non. It's just strange, yeah, right? Because a lot of people use... I know this may not be exactly what it means, but a lot of people just be like, oh, not monotheistic. Like, you believe in lots of gods. So, you know, that's a pagan thing. But that would, well, make, that prob- would make every uh, culture in Elder Scrolls, you know, quote, pagan. But I don't think that's what yeah. it means. I think it just means the sort of the outcast, sort of like a pagan heretic yeah. kind of vibe, yeah. you know? I mean, one thing that's like doesn't really seem very scary but if you imagine it from a very pretty if you imagine it from a, a child's perspective that's the I've got one oh, yeah, yeah. up here as well oh, but I, I won't i'll knock it down um but you know from a child's perspective you can almost imagine it in your own childhood where you've got nelkir in dragon's reach who's got this entire palace to wander around but it's kind of hidden behind all the sacks of grain and all of that there's this weird old looking door covered in spider webs and it's it's almost like it sucks in the light around and and Nelkir goes up to it listens through the keyhole and the the whispering lady tells him secrets and having just Mafala chill it you know kind of like possessing a room of your house is like the kind of horror that you can imagine scaring the shit out of a child he, he, mm-hmm. I here's a fun game for us Let, let's just real quick like are they Halloween worthy or not? We'll go through the Daedric Princes. Azura. No. No. As in, wait, in what in what sense? Would you dress up as them? Or are <laughs> no, they scary? No, uh, no, no. Are, are there any like re- like true scary kind of things? Not just like all oh, malicious. Like, oh, it's like, do you know what I mean? Like that kind of going on that fear of the unknown vibe. So like a Boethia, I don't actually think. No. Nah. Clavicus Vile. Like there's potential in like. In certain it's, deals. It's, he's too whimsical. Yeah. He's. Yeah, if Hermaeus he, Mora. For sure, I think for if sure. Clavicus Vile didn't come off, if he wasn't so childlike in the way he deals with you, 
it, it, it could mm. be a lot creepier, kind of like a Gauntro Dim style, because they, they, yeah. they have similar roles. It's just, yeah, it's just the difference in like, Gauntro Dim feels very in control, you know what I mean? And that's what makes it kind of scary. Whereas I feel like Clavicus Vile's like, oh, you know, someone stole my sword. Damn, I got to do this. He he seems almost childlike. He's a bit more of a he, sports bet. Sports uh, bet, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Her that. scene, oh, actually, right. interestingly, I feel like he's, while not typically horror, could be worked into it, just in the sort of like, you know, the typical werewolves kind of stuff, but the idea of being hunted, I guess, the blood, is a big Like the blood moon fear, prophecy, mm-hmm. being, you know, when all the yeah. hawkers wash up on the blood, bloody shores. Yeah. And, you know, Save yeah. his hide would be a good outfit, too. Mm. Oh, well, I mean, that's pretty metal and cool, the idea that he ripped his own skin off and that's the safest hide at school. Mm. But Jigalag, Malakath, Mayrun's Dagon, I don't think so. Mafala, yeah. Mm-hmm. Not Meridia. Merlag Bal, yeah. Namira. Namira yeah. has the shades as well, which are interesting, corrupted kind of, you know, classical thing. That, that, oh, if, I thought you meant shade. Yeah, okay. I was wondering what you yeah. meant by that. Yeah. Yeah. Classic Deal with avia, it. Yeah. <laughs> no, nocturnal. I don't find it that scary. Nah, I feel like nah, it's. Uh, nah, it's just booba. Sa- same <laughs> as. Even, <laughs> even Periot. Um, there's some of the like maybe some the, of the, the natural like, the order stuff, takes but it's all not the enough. Fear out of it. Mm. Yeah, sanguine. Uh, it's kind Depends of on who you are. That depends what your yeah. addiction is. Sheogorath, yeah. yeah. Skipping I think with your absolutely. entrails is pretty. Yeah, and that un- once again, it's that like unpredictableness, yeah. like that sort of like you don't know what they really want or thinking. And then obviously Vaymina. I mean, she is the Daedric Prince of Nightmares, and you know. Mm-hmm. But, and uh, scariest yeah, of so, all, Jigalag. Did you say Jigalag? I did say that's Jigalag. The scariest. Said, no. Complete no, order. Too, too, <laughs> but that's too comforting. It's too, order is very knowable. You know what I mean? But it everyone is saying nice it's, con- it's confronting the potential of your lack of free will. Is can be scary. It's like an existential crisis. Almost. The Knights of Order are far from yeah. predictable. Like per- perfect yeah. order from Jigalag's perspective is is kind of hard to well i mean you could predict total domination and it's just all one it's the yeah, same yeah. thing no i'm not like I'm eventually not it's the perfect that he's a it's spooky not, skeleton yeah. but yeah so uh they meet so what it's just for people, if they want to get into some Daedric Prince research and if they want their horror vibes, Vaymina, Sheogorath, Namira, Merlag Bal, Mafala, and Hermaeus Mora, maybe her scene as well. But that's a very, that's a bit more like a slasher horror kind of vibe. Like if you're, I don't know, maybe if people want to write like their own like creative stories or something, like you can use those Daedric Princes as prompts. I feel like, you know, a, a slasher flick with her scene as the, <laughs> as the hunter mm. could be pretty cool. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I feel like has anyone else got anything spooky? Or Only something? small things. You can always think of small things, yeah. like you know, um, things involved Outside with necromancy. Of- There's lots of little things. Outside of Elder Scrolls, have you done anything spooky? Read anything spooky for spooky season? <laughs> Not. Yeah, I'm. I'm terrible huh? for spooky. Goodness, it's it's a shame but- Australia doesn't celebrate it quite as much. I think as the rest of the world. Mm. Doesn't feel like it anyway. No, they don't. Yeah, but uh, I did read uh, uh, Uzumaki by Junji Ito. That's if if you like weird stuff, like obviously, like I, I sometimes I assume a bunch of our audience does because they like you know Morrowind's a sort of a weirder version of fantasy. Um, Uzumaki is a really yeah, creepy. Put up a manga. couple of pictures because some of it is real. Like if just a few yeah. pages of it is really creepy. I like mean, it's you can it's get away with it. <laughs> And in terms of that, like, unknowable too, it's another really creepy... It's really, really cool. But, um... Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah you, you probably have to look elsewhere from the Elder Scrolls for for your real, like, true horror. Horror, like, if you want that vibe. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. Well, happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. And thank you again so much for... Don't be a Halloween. One million subs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Thank you. One meal. We'll do more uh, more celebrations next time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, proper celebration next week. This time yeah. next week. But we we didn't want to skip the Halloween episode because it was perfect. Yeah, timing, perfect so. timing. Well, yeah. thank you everyone for tuning in. Follow us on social media. Twitter links down in the description, as well as a link to our merch if you want to get a fresh tea and support the channel. It's been Michael Scott and Drew, and we look forward to nerding out with you again very soon. <laughs>